If you've ever watched a parachuting demonstration, and during that demonstration the parachutist came down in a MC6, very steerable canopy, but he somehow didn't miss the one small puddle in the middle of the DZ, and when he impacted that puddle, he had a terrible PLF, opened up his legs, rolled over in the water, then his parachute reinflated and he stood up and tried to chase after it, running through the water. Hit that subscribe button. Um, for real though, I always like hearing from my uh, airborne brethren and other branches how things are going and uh, any jump stories are greatly appreciated. Like, comment, do all those good things, you know they help me out. Um, as far as what ammunition I'm shooting and who supports me, Freedom Munitions, guys I've shot Freedom Munitions for about three years now. Uh, I've done probably, I want to say around 60,000 rounds total. Big fan of them. Um, about a month ago, they started supporting me, giving me more ammunition so I could do more testing. And they also give you guys a discount code. So pretty cool of them. Um, give them some support. I'm a big fan of them. In any case, go out there and train. That way you look cool when you use your guns and don't look stupid. About a month ago, I made a video on the CZ P10C, which is a handgun that CZ released. Now, they got mildly popular, but what that did for me was CZ contacted me and they wanted to know if I wanted to try out any other guns. Well, of course I did. I wanted to try out that Czech scar, you know what I'm saying? So, I asked for the CZ805 Bren, and they sent me one. And I'll be trying out a couple other guns. So, they kindly provided this uh, to me to allow me to try it out and kind of see what I thought of it. So, the question is, is this a Czech version of the scar? Now, the scar being a very reliable, very battle-proven weapon with good ergonomics, it's not quite there. I have a couple reasons um, why I don't like it as much as the SCAR, but, and we'll, we'll kind of talk about that, but what it really comes down to isn't form or function or anything like that. Uh, it functions well, it's a very reliable weapon, it's very accurate. It comes down to ergonomics for me. But let's talk about this a little bit. So first off, um, the CZ805 Bren is a 5.56 chambered rifle with an 11 inch barrel with a nice little muzzle break in the end. For the rifle version, it is a 16.2 inch barrel um, just small differences there, and of course it has a stock. The pistol, of course, has a stabilizing brace, um, thanks ATF, and uh, it operates off a short stroke uh, gas piston type system. So, with kind of that out of the way, let's talk about um, kind of what I like about it. Also, I've got the Leupold LCO on here, provided to me by Leupold, um, to try out a kind of an interesting, kind of a weird optic. We'll talk about that in a later video. Okay, so starting all the way from the back, let's talk about sling mounts. So first off, this thing's got sling mounts for days. So we have two sling mounts on either side for HK type hooks and also QD slots on either side. Up front, we have QD slots on either side. Um, I think this is a good position for the way that this gun fires, which has a reciprocating charging handle. Speaking of that, how does it recoil? Very well. Um, it has a, a recoil impulse really similar to the SCAR-16. Um, or some of you guys might know the scar light or whatever. It's basically it's a scar in 556. Five, so what that means is it's a really gentle impulse back into you. Um, it's a really smooth recoil cycle. Now, it is a little bit more stout than say a direct impingement system on an AR-15 or something like that. So if you're expecting that, it's not quite there. It's definitely a different recoil impulse and it does take a little getting used to if you're not used to running uh, you know, piston type systems on rifles. Um, one thing about it, just so I can show you, is how smooth the rifle operates. So if I actuate the charging handle, like that, that is smooth. So that definitely translates into the recoil impulse, which is nice. Okay, so moving on from there, let's talk a little bit about the takedown pins. I'm not going to take apart this rifle. That's not my style. Um, you know, I'm not a not like a gunsmith or an armor or anything like that. That's readily apparent. You know, it's kind of like Ambrosia Terrebone once said, you know, uh, knights back in the day, they weren't, you know, swordsmiths. They were like sword experts at fighting. And, I'm, not, I'm not a knight though, but anyhow, uh, so I don't do a whole lot of armoring work. But anyhow, uh, to take it down, you simply press in these little wire detents and you can take it down and it retains it. Otherwise, what that does is make it really easy to take apart. So I'm a big fan of it. 
Good job, CZ, for coming up with a somewhat novel and not retarded way of taking down a rifle that works. So that is good. Now, a couple notes here. Um, the lower receiver on this is polymer, and the upper is one block of aluminum, just all the way. So it gives a lot of rigidity, probably aids in accuracy, and this is a very accurate gun from my testing for a short-barreled rifle, of course. And not that they're less accurate, they just less distance. We're not gonna go into that. Anyhow, um, my first gripe with this gun comes into play with the safety. So, Everyone's been gushing about the safety on this gun. They're like, oh man, it's a short throw. It's friggin' awesome. So what they mean by short throw is it doesn't really travel a whole lot when you select from safe to fire. Eh, and I understand where they're coming from, but the problem is that it's in a really awkward position. So this is their thin grip that they have, and I don't have like huge hands. I got like, I got man hands though, you know? I'm not a, I'm not like a manlet. But anyhow, when I go to shoulder this gun and square up to my target, and I go to actuate that safety to bring it off safe onto fire, say when the buzzer goes off, that's, I have to really reach around with my hand there to get it. So it's just not very ergonomic. It's very hard to do when I'm, when I'm really in the gun. So I'm not a huge fan of it. So what I've come to do with this is treat it like an AK where I sweep off the safety with my firing hand. Solvable for sure with like a new lower or something like that, but it's just kind of an annoyance, you know, in in this day and age, like I don't feel like this should have been a problem. Um, another thing I don't like about the grip is the grip angle. And unfortunately that grip angle, angle is not changeable, so I can't swap that out. I wish it was a little bit more shallow. That allows me to kind of shoot and get into the gun a little bit easier when I'm squaring up to the target. So one thing I do like about the 805 Bren is the trigger. The trigger is very nice. It is definitely a mil-spec trigger, so you have about a five pound pull, but that is a very smooth, smooth. pull. Uh, you don't have a whole lot of creep. It's a predictable take up, and I've been pretty impressed with the trigger. So you guys are just gonna have to pretend that you're here with me right now as we pull that trigger. Oh yeah. And feel that reset. It feels really similar to a good AR trigger. So I've been definitely impressed with that trigger and I've been happy with it. Now, as far as magazine release, it is ambidextrous on both sides. Uh, no problems there, easy to reach, easy to get to, nice and tactile, easy to do. Um, what is weird is bolt catch, bolt release. So bolt catch is right above the magazine well, right, magazine release right here. Pull back on that, then you can keep that locked back. Now, what's weird is that this doesn't have a bolt release, so I definitely sat here like a retard for a while. Excuse me, it's not PC. I sat here like an idiot, uh, just trying to actuate that, being like, why isn't my bolt release working? Until I actually read the manual, and I was like, ah, it has no bolt release, that's odd. It, it's just an odd thing for a, a modern rifle not to have a bolt release. It's just a, it seems like it's, you should have a bolt release, but in any case, they don't. So what this means is to load it. So for example, if this were a loaded magazine, first off, if I have it inserted, I'm not gonna be able to release that charging handle. So we're gonna pretend that we're loading this. We're not gonna seat it all the way. That way the follower doesn't stop the forward movement of the bolt. And to release it, you simply barely pull back on that and that will release. And then that would be loaded at that point. But um, it's just odd. So the charging handle placement is not bad. I'm, I'm happy with having the charging handle on the left side. The problem comes into play with how high it is. So if you notice with my loophole LCO, I have it mounted all the way back. When I first mounted um, an Opticon to this gun, it was the uh, EOTech Voodoo on the little Geisley mount. And I mounted it right over this. And the problem was is that every time I went to go actuate the charging handle, which is every time I'm doing a reload or just all the time, I'm constantly just like skinning my knuckles and destroying gloves. So it got pretty annoying. Um, you can move it to, you know, the right side because you always have the knobs on the left side or a QD mount or something like that. But it, because it's so high, you're just always scraping past that optic or that mount or something like that. It's just not very fun. Um, I know some guys might want to swap over the charging handle to the right side. It's really easy to do. Um, I'm sure all my AK guys are going to switch it right over because they're all about doing the reach around and that type of stuff. That's what they like. But... Uh, I prefer it on the left-hand side. <sighs> All right, here's my second point. Well, here's another point of aggravation that I have is the top rail. Um, so they did these lightening cuts right here to ensure that it's a little bit lighter. 
But the problem is, is that they didn't dehorn them, so they're incredibly sharp. Now, why is that a big deal? Well, like many other uh, shooters out there, I do a thumb over bore grip, or C-clamp, whatever the hell you want to call it. So when I'm gripping the rifle, I'm up and over on it. So what's happening is during recoil and all that kind of stuff, um, these kind of sharp edges on the Picatinny rail are just shredding my gloves. And like, I say sharp and you're like, well, you know, the DD, the Daniel Defense rails, those are pretty sharp as well. But not like, not like the CZs. So not a huge fan of those. The rails on the bottom right here are not nearly as sharp. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe it's in my head. But in any case, I can alleviate that by simply going thumb down on that. But it's just, you know, the way I shoot, I probably have to modify kind of how I shot with this gun. Um, what this comes down to also is the amount of rail space that we have. Not a whole lot. And with any type of pistol build or short build rifle, that's a problem. Um, but with a gas piston system, um, the gun's already a little fat up front because it needs to have all the hardware up there and all that type of deal. So because of that, if I were to mount, say, a PEC or some type of IR laser device, um, it's going to be extremely fat in order to grip that. So that's no fun at all. You know, I make jokes about this rifle being, or other rifles being girthy and stuff. And the girthiest rail I typically go with is like the Daniel Defense rail. The Daniel Defense rail is still smaller than the, uh, the foregrip foreend on the uh, 805 Bren. So... It's, uh, it's significant. So I think that the Bren is a good candidate for like some type of offset IR device if you are running that like a mall or something like that. Um, these side rails right here can be swapped out for key mod, M lock, quad rail, whatever you want to put on there. So it's pretty modular as far as that goes. <sighs> Moving up to the very front of the rifle here, we have the um, gas system setting. So you can set that to adverse or normal. I typically have this set to adverse as I'm running it in some pretty intense conditions with some pretty crappy ammo sometimes. Um, not freedom in that case. I was just testing out some really weak powered ammunition. But um, what, the, what the gas settings do is the adverse allows more gas in the system so you have kind of a harsher recoil cycle. But it's still not that bad. Um, switching over to standard is say you're using good ammunition, guns nice and clean, or just functioning normally. So anyhow, those are easy to change. You simply press down that little detent and twist it over so it's not that hard to do. We also have a bayonet lug right here so that we can mount uh, bayonets because they look cool and uh, obviously you want a bayonet on your gun. Finally, moving up to the muzzle brake. I'm not a huge fan of muzzle brakes. I wish they would have done like a flash hider or something. It does work really well. Uh, definitely keeps the gun on target and all that type of stuff. Um, no really opinions on it. It, it. it works and it does its part. I'll probably swap that out for like a surefire flash hider at some point in the near future. That way I can run the suppressor on this and kind of put it through its paces a little bit more. Um, regarding this weapon too, um, magazines. So pretty much any AR-15 magazine works with this. So we have an ETS right here, hex mag. Uh, it actually comes with these little USGI mags right here. They work fine. Uh, mag poles work fine. I have an E mag, but it works with any mag pole. Um, the only thing is you have the little, on the Gen 3s, you have the over insertion little tab right there kind of sticking out, so that kind of looks a little funky, but, you know, looking cool matters, but it, it still functions. But anyhow, all AR-15 magazines work with this. I've tried out pretty much every magazine you can imagine, and they all work. So, kind of in conclusion, this, it's, it's a well-functioning gun. It's reliable. Um, it's accurate. Uh, it feels like a scar as far as the recoil impulse is concerned, but it has kind of not good ergonomics. So a lot of the kind of gripes I brought up with this gun are solved with the new version, which is either called the 806 or maybe it's the 806 or the Gen 2. point is they kind of fix a lot of the problems that I have because they recognize them. Um, I don't know when, the, when that next version will be coming out. Uh, for now, we just have this. And I think as it stands, there's a couple issues there. Um, how big is the issue? It depends on you as a shooter, um, kind of how you're built, kind of how you handle guns and all that type of thing. But for me, it's not the best. It's still a good gun. Um, there's just definitely a lot of things I want to change on it. Um, ultimately, though, it comes down to looking cool. This gun definitely looks cool. Um, I just don't look as cool when I'm sweeping off the safety like an AK. I won't be able to answer questions for like the next week or two or something like that. So police yourselves. Don't do anything too crazy. Don't do anything that I wouldn't do. And as always, stay looking cool, guys. Thanks for watching.